Happy Friday, the 2nd of December. Welcome back to the TomCast. My name is Tom Simons. I'm a friend of yours and a friend of people big and small. I am going to share my process for coloring today. This is a sketch I've been working on for about eh, four or five hours on and off over the course of the fall. And I'm going to try to color this in. Not going to be a lot of talking today, but hopefully a lot of coloring. Coloring, coloring, coloring. So this is a diver, so I want to be an aquatic kind of theme. So I'm going to think about what, what colors and mood do I want to use here. So uh, with that in mind, I'm going to minimize the drawing and just start layering colors. Let's start with blue because it's a water thing. What does blue look like? We have that blue. Let's do a dark, maybe sea green kind of blue. The beautiful thing about working digitally is you get to try stuff rapidly. Kind of a shallow. Throwing a little green into the blue uh, makes it feel salty to me. I don't know if that's true. I mean, there's chlorine pools and stuff. Like, something about the greener it is, the more uh, it's for swimming. And the more blue it is, the more it's for drinking. And then the more red-purple it is, the more uh, psychedelic or spacey or nebula or sci-fi. Just, I think purple is such a rare color in nature that uh, it stands out, you know? So, like, octopuses might be purple. I don't know. What would contrast with this well? orange yellow so let's let's come up with some contrast colors along the sides of this just to kind of brainstorm what will feel cool so uh orange against blue is is the primary contrast let's see what a yellow looks like and where does this work really well i like this desaturated yellow if i'm creating a contrast of colors it might be helpful to desaturate one so you have a primary that's going to be your fully saturated, really exciting, really rich color. And then you're going to have your muted like partner. Think about actors in a movie. You have your best actor, you have your lead, and you have your support. Just like the Oscars, right? So if I went full gold, this really takes the priority over these blues. But if I go with a desaturated gold, it's it's a little subservient subservient to this really saturated uh, teal color. So that's a way to think about a hierarchy of your colors within a, a drawing. Uh, let's just see for demonstration purposes uh, some darker reds and oranges. Where does this wo color work? Does it work anywhere? It vibrates uh, quite loudly against this orange, or, or sorry, this orange against this teal color. It, it vibrates in my eyes right now, and it's kind of intense. If I dim that down, make it more of like a terracotta color, this vibrates a little less. There's still a lot of vibration between these two colors. Whereas that gold doesn't vibrate as much. You can see this on the left side and the right side. This is the kind of exercises we did with Colorade in color theory class back at MICA in 2001, 2002. I didn't get it at the time. It took like 20 years of digital painting on top of that for me to start to play with these kinds of things. Let's also look at like tonal differences, maybe some silver colors. So if I go up brighter and lighter how does that feel this is a really nice uh kind of color relationship here reminds me of maybe a sunset you know where we have the teal like a silvery blue and then a desaturated gold and then a saturated orange 
Uh, this relationship, I'm just going to blow it up so you can see this on the big screen a little bit better. I'm going to copy that layer and blow it up. This series of colors is actually is pretty nice. Right? It feels harmonious. And we can look at my color picker on the right and see where these colors are on the saturation brightness uh, scale. So the teal is really the brightest. Uh, sorry, sorry, this light silver color is. And then the teal is more saturated and darker. Um, the gold's actually darker than the blue is in the in the hue. Sorry, in the set. Uh, what is this tonal scale? And then where's the orange at? It's actually the same level. But that that saturation of color makes it feel darker. It's really interesting. Everything you learn, too, with color is dependent on the medium itself. If it's pigment, it's going to behave differently than if it's an LED screen. So if, if we're going to be printing this stuff out, we got to make it a lot brighter just to begin with because we're working on a backlit screen versus light bouncing off of your uh, surface. And that'll change colors depending on what kind of light you're using. And it'll look different depending on what monitor you're looking at it on. So that's just a quick aside. So welcome, welcome. If you're here live, I see a couple likes already. Thanks for tuning in and checking this out. Let's, I like this color scheme a lot for this illustration and I might come back to it, but I want to explore a couple more things for you. So let's try taking a radically different approach. So beauty of Photoshop is we can put our layers separate from our drawings that we use our colors for. So I can just turn this layer off uh, where we are playing with color. So I'm gonna create another layer. And instead of starting with uh, the blues for the C, what happens if I start from the uh, opposite? Let's try um, something completely different. Let's start with like greens and yellows. Why not? Just experiment. Let's let's fill the color field with like a middle kind of seaweed green. Suddenly it feels like a Scooby-Doo villain. And if we're starting with a medium saturated green, where can we go to create a complementary color field? Well, red vibrates way too loud. I'll, I'll show you this. This is just an incredibly vibrating, like watermelon kind of silly color relationship. So we don't like that at all. Let's paint over that. So red's out. Let's try that blue again. Blue feels pretty good, pretty complimentary. What's a light? What's a lighter than that? And what's a darker? What's a darker sea green look like against the saturated green. That's kind of nice, actually. This feels kind of swampy. Let's experiment down there. So we're starting with the green and then adding the blue in. What happens if I add the shallow blue up top, too? There's a very swamp thing kind of feel uh, to, this, to this situation here. And what happens if we add a bright yellow in? This is exciting. This now becomes electric, right? So where you start from can affect your mood. What's your primary? So this saturated yellow, it feels really electric against the kind of pea green and, and deep ocean um, salty sea green at the bottom. So very different vibes. What happens if I bring in a little bit of that terracotta red in here? So maybe it's skin tone. What's a little bit of that feel like in this environment? Um, it feels pretty artificial, feels pretty fake to me. What happens if we make it richer? Like a Coast Guard stripe with the white life preserver vest. It's a color that pops off really bright off the surface. This feels 1970s pop art, maybe. There's some interesting things to do here. Sometimes, like, just running a blue through there can create, like, a high-vis, high contrast with your colors. So what I'm trying to demonstrate is 
just encouraging you to play with the colors that are around. And you have this big color scale in Photoshop, and it's digital. You can pick whatever you want. Uh, what'll what'll be more harmonious? Let's see what else we have here. We have the green, we have the yellow, we have a little bit of red here. What else can we try? Why not try the purple? It's an option. Let's try a saturated purple first, see how it feels. Interesting, right? Let's tone it down. Let's try making a mostly gray. What's the mostly gray purple object feel like? against these colors in the background. This is boring and uninteresting. It's funny how just like flat gray that purple feels relative to these very saturated greens and blues, right? So there is definitely purple in this gray. Become a little darker. But it's definitely livelier than pure gray. Like pure gray just feels very dead. There's There's nothing no excitement out of this pure gray at all it's just uh it's it's killing off the excitement that the colors can give this drawing right so by putting a little bit of purple in there it actually creates a very nice contrast against that green isn't that interesting so we have some purples against the green environment what's it look like if we fill these characters in Let's take this like green blue gradient in the background and reproduce it and then carefully color in our characters and see what that looks like. So I'll take this background. Uh, let me just recreate this color gradient by sampling a side of it. Let's control C, copy that, paste it. And then I'm going to stretch this this little piece out to fill the whole background. So that's not too bad, right? Let's, let's select our um, drawing. Let's invert the selection. I'm going to add the or reduce the selection of the armpit area and this pit area here. So I'm just selecting the subject, and let's fill it in with this purple, uh, purple gray. Now that'll be a known that'll be its own layer as well. Pretty radical, huh? Pretty radical. But we have some pop here. There's already some excitement. And let's take this and do add a quick gradient. I'm gonna layer in uh, gradient tools. Pretty cool. It picks the foreground and background, and you draw a line in it, and it goes in direction from the foreground to the background. So by having it light at the top and colored and saturated at the bottom, you establish very clearly uh, a hierarchy of what's the top and what's the bottom by brightness. So, But this white is kind of dead. Why not make it more exciting? Let's go with a yellow. Let's try warming it up a little bit. Maybe a little yellow gold at the top and maybe a desaturated mid-level mid-saturation purple and let's see what that looks like oh, wow look at this excitement this is really vibrating and because it's its own layer and we have all these beautiful controls in photoshop we can adjust the, the opacity we can make it thinner we can also change the layer style. Experiment with how this feels, how these colors interact with each other. Pretty wild stuff. This is how you can learn to use color. So maybe you say this is too intense. Tom, this is supposed to be a realistic sketch. Why are you doing crazy colors? Well, these crazy colors can add some emotional feel to something that might otherwise feel pretty stale. So I can do all my highlights and shadows in just black and white, which is kind of dead and maybe kind of boring, and then punt these colors in later on and add some excitement to it. 
So I'm going to try to do some tonal work now, and then we'll come back in 15 minutes and throw these colors back on and maybe see what it feels like. I think that might be fun. This is going to be an experimentation today, and uh, let's see where it goes. So I'm going to turn uh, this guy off. Let's go back to the black and white. You know, we could put, look at that again. Does this look cool? This is kind of fun, the purple with the teals and stuff. You know, it's, <laughs> look, comparing to this sea green to the, the original colors, this feels very California to me. Very happy, beach boys, surfs up, wipe out kind of vibe. Uh, Micah represent, I got this hoodie at the Micah school store. I gave a little talk a couple weeks ago. It was a lot of fun. Uh, my coworker came down with me. And that was uh, great. Always great to give back to students, give back to Micah, the institution that gave me so much. Thanks, uh, Mom, for letting me go to art school. It was a good time. Okay, let's go back into tonal stuff. So when I was in art school, I didn't really get color. I was focused on the grayscale, tonally, darkness, lightness. Um, let's go back to this. Create a new layer, desaturate that just so we have a vertical of, of light to dark. This is something I learned from Valve when they were doing the art guide to Team Fortress 2, that they add this vertical gradient into their characters to create more dimension. Uh, they did this with Dota, Defense of the Ancients, a MOBA, is that right? MOBA game? I'm so out of the game loop these days, though I did just get Dark Tide, and I played with my friend Matt last night and his friend Ed, and I had a great time. Left 4 Dead style game, if you know what that is, four-player co-op versus hordes of enemies, and you just have to survive and get through the missions. So this is going to be our base, our gray base, and then I'm going to start adding lights and darks to create shadow and volume so um volume maybe you we could think about like lightest and most contrast being closer to you and then less saturated and darker or you know less contrasting and darker in the distant so we can try that we also could think about highlights and shadow in terms of like where the where the source of light is so we're going to do a little bit of both Hey, let's try the Z-depth approach first and foremost and see where we get out of it. So I'll create another layer. So I'm going to put, I'm going to use my Tom brush. Let's go about like 60% and start putting lights on the corners of objects that are going to be closer to the point of view. So I have my sketch here, and I've thought for about six hours or so how the different forms of this drawing work. And what I'm doing, really for you and for the viewer, is refining my idea. And the usage of lights to... Uh, highlight the surfaces that are closer to the viewer is a universal visual language, if that makes sense. Getting messages, so I got to check check the messages while I'm doodling. Uh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Close that. So objects that are in front of other other objects are going to get a little bit lighter treatment. Because you, the artist, know what you meant when you put these lines down. But the viewer might not understand. Dimensionally, 
this character's left knee is going to be a little closer than its right knee, so its left knee is going to get a little bit more highlight. Same with the hand. It's almost as if you're shining a flashlight on the character directly from the point of view of the viewer. The, the surfaces that are facing directly at the point of view are going to be getting the most light. It's going to be a lot of edges. Now some of these edges have a line on them and maybe eventually, maybe I'd put this highlight above my drawing, right? This works pretty well too, actually. So this highlight layer is going above um, what I what I drew. Let's do that. So I don't if you didn't catch that, I just moved, I'm gonna call this layer highlights. I put that above the drawing. Okay. Now let's do the opposite. Let's add another layer and call it maybe shadows. Now I'm going to be painting around the outside of the figure here and I don't want to draw outside of the lines. So I'm going to select that kind of filled in silhouette thing and then I can hide the extra so I think there's so there's a check box next to extras and I think that includes the selection set so even though I have a selection here it's just not blanking in my field of view so um, you know the, the Q does that too the by pressing Q it shows you what the mask is or what the selection area is let's turn that off and then just hide or under the view just uncheck extras and now I should only be painting inside of the lines. Maybe I'll get the soft brush. And I'm just going to darken the faces that aren't facing the camera. Stuff that's going by 60% is a bit strong here. Let's go down to 30%. Stuff that's further away gets a little bit darker. So I'm just airbrushing the outside edge of everything. This should start to make it feel voluminous. Right, see, I'm already starting to get some volume in this character, right? Hey, Drew, thanks for tuning in. Long time, man. Long time, right? Thanks for hanging out. How you doing on this Friday? So once we got a little bit of that volume in, next I'm going to think about, let's do some top-down shadow, some actual, like, source light. I'm going to imagine that there is some kind of light above and slightly in front of this character. So I'm going to put shadows as if the light bulb, let's draw the, let's draw the light in here just so you know what I'm talking about. I'm imagining a light that is slightly in front and high above 
uh, this individual. Like maybe up here somewhere. Like that. Drew says he's doing well. Thanks. Hope the same for you. I'm doing all right. Doing all right. All right, so we're back in the shadows layer, which is kind of on top of this character. And let's airbrush in some lights. Let's do 30%. So parts of the surface that are now looking towards that light. And let's reselect uh, that whole shebang. The outer area and hide the extras so we're not painting outside of our lines here back to my sharpen kind of tom brush These are surfaces that are facing up. We're getting you can get into these little detail areas and people love details so if you want to spend the time and think about like every ridge and part of this hose that is going to be looking towards that light source you know someone's going to nerd out about that and get excited by it and get visually stimulated you know The old masters working with oils would spend days, weeks, months building up their layers of lights and darks using oil paint. Kind of dolphin shaped delivery vehicle here. All right, feeling kind of good about that. Let's do the same with darks. So anything that's not facing that light source now gets darkened down. And maybe some of these objects that cast a shadow. This whole part would probably be in shadow. Under the armpit.
I do like drawing pouches. All the gear and pouches. Reminds you of like Batman, utility belts, superheroes, G.I. Joes. I just love stuff. Stuff gets me excited. When I see some Uber commando carrying a bunch of stuff, I said, ooh, they must have a very important job. They got all the stuff for it. They got stuff for doing jobs, doing work, getting it done. It also like you assume someone who's carrying stuff is probably an expert with that stuff. That's not always true because you get a lot of posers who like wearing a lot of stuff. And uh, I might be guilty of that. You know, wearing more stuff than I know how to really use. I want to feel cool. I remember I used to carry a Leatherman to school when I was a little kid because I had pliers and stuff, little pocket knife and things, and screwdrivers so I could take apart computers and put stuff back together. And if I was working on a set for a theater club, I'd have the tool there for uh, you know pulling a nail out or something like that. And I used to feel cool for carrying a Leatherman in my belt. Now, it just seems kind of cringy, but back then I felt cool for it. I don't think you can carry a Leatherman on your belt to school these days. You probably shouldn't have when I was in school in the 90s. This control surface here is in shadow. It's not directly facing the light source. So now I'm running into some some issues where I'm trying to draw some shadows back in, but I have my highlights on this other layer, so they're starting to conflict. I'll eventually merge these all together. Some shadows under this tank and this hose situation here. Adding darkness to areas that I want to recede in the picture plane. Shadows under the pouches to make them pop more. Every element gets at least a little bit of shadow. Maybe you're into designing fashion and you want to feel the clothes layer on top of each other. Thin little shadow might help. I think if you spend the time making a clear drawing, the coloring and tonal work can go fairly quickly and painlessly. Part of the concept art process and becoming good at concept art is developing an efficient way to communicate ideas from most important uh, to, to least important. Let's shade the inside of this helmet.
to be some shadow cast from this like visor area. You always get a little bit of shadow by the eyelid on the eye itself. It's a bit messy, but that's okay. To come in here and erase some of that highlight layer using my eraser tool now to break this highlight up to mimic uh, the feel of this hose part for the rebreather apparatus all right so we got some decent volume here eh starting to feel like a figurine of some kind it's not really clear around the neck so I'm going to darken this down I might have left this area a little too vague with my drawing later because I'm finding I have to make some decisions in this tonal section that weren't really clear from the drawing section that was a mistake sometimes I let I leave stuff vague it, I'll just make it dark because I don't want to think about that just yet. I'll add some folds. Hey, L, what's going on, man? This was an idea you gave me a long time ago. I'm finally getting around to. L wanted to see a Navy SEAL version of like a Starship Trooper. And uh, this was what I was working on there. It's probably not as armored up as the Heinlein uh, story imagines. Happy Friday, L. Something like that. Okay, so... I promised I would show how these colors worked out. So let me just add a little bit more highlight down here to this other propeller unit. So let's see, if we turn our colors back on, what do we get? L says, it's awesome. Thanks, L. L is in the house as he has proclaimed in the chat. Uh, let's save this. And now, for my next trick, let's turn the colors on and put the color at the top. And let's play with some of these layer styles to see what we get. Multiply, color burn. This all stuff's pretty cool. Linear burn, darker color, lighten the screen, color dodge. Linear dodge, lighter color, overlay. Overlay is usually my go-to. So we get a lot of color here, a little bit brighter and a little bit darker. So let's bring that opacity down to zero and bring it up 50%, maybe 33%. So what we have before is like a very dead feeling gray image. And it's by slapping that color gradient on it, even at 30%, we're starting to get some life. We're starting to get some fluid inside of this subject. Let's put in the background uh, color. Okay, now we got something that's popping. It's pretty exciting. I really want some more reds in here. I want some warms. I want to warm this thing up. It's feeling very cool right now. And I haven't talked about that cool versus warm. Um, this is a vibration that you can add to your artwork warm colors are the oranges the reds the yellows cool colors are going to be the greens the blues what's up brandon brandon says hi tom mans hey uh brandon b man all right so we got that overlay what happens if i add a little red in here where can i add some red 
to make it feel warm. Let's create another layer. Let's get a saturated little red. And I'm going to experiment on this layer. We'll go the wide airbrush feeling thing. And we're just going to punch a little red into like the shadow side. I don't, I'm imagining, I'm imagining there's a red light over on the right uh, field of our view here. Let's take another, um, and let's get rid of the selection stuff that's going on. I'm imagining there's like a red light from down here. Let's see, how would this give us some form and some shape? So if there's a LED, little red light over there, this little red light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. I'm just gonna hit the side of this figure with a little bit of that red and see what that feels like. It's just hard to make it bounce. Isn't that interesting? Already we're getting some interesting feeling effects. Just putting a little red in it, primitively we think about blood, we think about meat, we think about uh, poppy, bright red flowers, things that stand out. Red Corvettes, man. A little bit of red's making this thing pop. I talk to my students or whatever students want to listen about three points of light. You have your key, your rim, your fill. You need to have three lights on a subject for it to look good for television. Television invented a lot of rules for lighting. Uh, filmmaking too, of course. You go into a TV studio, there's a gazillion lights. They want people to feel good on TV because they're trying to sell soap. That's why they're called soap operas. Look at the pretty people. Look at the pretty people having pretty lives. Buy soap. <laughs> All right, so we got a little red in there. Let's get rid of that. It's starting to feel a little more alive. A little more alive. Play around with this a little bit more. What do we got? What do we got? How do we feel about this? How do we feel about it? It's kind of fun, man. What's the other background look like? Woo, Surf Town USA with that teal and gold, right? Gaussian blur it up. Blur, Gaussian blur. Let's blur that background. And then uh, expand it a bit. Bump. Surfing USA. That's pretty wild looking. I don't know if I like it, but it's one to demonstrate some color stuff. How about this? What's this feel like if I stretch this out? It's kind of fun, right? Kind of iconic. Looks like a poster you might have outside of SEAL Team 3's base. I don't know where that is. It's funny how immediately this bottom field becomes a floor. And then this is some kind of wall and fence or something. You can turn this around. What's it look like sideways? Weird, very flag-like. What if it's on the ground? That's kind of cool, huh? What does that look like? Red earth, sand, a road, an icy lake, summer sky, something like that. You know, just having colors, your brain automatically wants to make a story out of it. It wants to understand. Hey, Joe has joined the chat. Joe says, I've got you and Doc on at the same time. Wow, that's a lot of stimulation. I believe Joe is referring to Dr. Disrespect. Spec, spec, spec. 
electric colors in the background. How does that feel? That feels kind of interesting with the purple and the green. Reminds me of bed knobs and broomsticks. It's a song that's something like uh, bobbing along at the bottom of the briny sea. Dial that color down a little bit. Let's go down to 50%. And let's take the... Oh, the gray is still active. The gray is still there. Interesting. Interessante. What happens if I darken this gray down or adjust it? Let's change the layer of the gray. Hit the, hit the levels. Right now, that gray range is in the middle. So what if I go to all the way black at the bottom and all the way at the white at the top? That's really bold. Too much. Let's, what if I move the gray around? Interesting. What feels real? Feels a little bit more real here, doesn't it? Let's try that out. We can also choose like a base color for this area. So let me select this whole guy and imagine he's like navy, dark, blue wetsuit kind of camouflage color whoa let's put that in there bring that to maybe 50 percent so we got a lot of layering going in the highlights are pretty bold on that so right now the highlights are in normal mode what if we change those to like a brighten or something? Let's play with those same layer styles and see what we get. Anything better? Anything worse? Let's just keep it normal. Lines are at 32. What happens if we turn our lines back up to 100? We get our details back. That's kind of interesting. It's kind of nice. Shadows. Shadows ain't bad. What do we get if we uh, change that layer style around? Something you can do that's kind of cool is like you make your shadow layer like a multiply. Or maybe your lines could even be like an overlay or a difference or something like that. Like you, you could put your lines up on a different layer and change that layer style and see what it does. Sometimes you can colorize your lines. Like, what happens when you divide it and, like, make white lines? That's kind of neat. When you're able to work in layers, you give yourself a lot of power. It's funny, the highlights above my color gradient just start to feel dead again. I think I want my highlights underneath the color gradient, which is this layer. So like, see how much that color layer is doing for us? Like, with right now we just have the red uh, kind of fill light on the right with a grayscale, and suddenly it's dead again. We put a little color in there, and voila, punches it up, brings it to life just a little bit. It's very simple to do. Now, is it perfect? No. In fact, in fact, it's actually like messing with our lights and shadows a bit. Really, what I want to do is kind of combine this gradient with my lights and shadows deciding what's like blue and what's like gold. So maybe I could do something kind of tricky here with the highlights and shadows. Like ideally I'd want the yellow, like I, I want the highlights to be the warm color and the shadows to be a bluer color. Let me try to isolate this and see if I can demonstrate this to this for you all. Create a new layer group. I'll put my highlights and my shadows in this layer group here. So group one, we'll call it light and shadow.
I would like my shadows to cast a blue. So this is going to be kind of wild. Bear with me. I'm going to use a dark blue. I'm going to fill the whole thing with that dark blue. I'm going to take my shadows. I'm going to select this by hitting Control. Actually, I don't know what's the best way to do this. I got to think about this. I think I'm just going to select the shadows, which is by like Control Left clicking the shadows layer, and then I'm going to create a mask for the blue. And it should already be masking out. So this is now the mask. So what's white here is what comes through. If you're into silk screening and making t-shirts, you might know this. And so now, instead of just black and white shadows, I have a blue shadow. And now I can dial this color. I can make this like a more saturated and like lighter, lighter color. I can make this very blue. You see that? So let's, let's keep that blue. So now, this is my color gradient, and now I'm layering in some blue over that color gradient area. And we'll do the same thing with the highlights. I'm going to select the highlights. Um, you know, I could. There's a, there's a million ways to skin a cat here. Let's pick this like goldish color. And then control click the highlights. Then click make mask. So now my highlights are this goldish color instead of just white, right? So we have our highlights that are goldish. Shadows are bluish. And we have our like verticality, light to dark, going down to a purple. So Joe likes purple. Joe said, no, cat skinning. I don't know what that refers to, but uh, I'm glad you're, you're commenting. Thanks for commenting. So instead of just white and black highlights and shadows, now we got colored lights and shadows. That's pretty cool. All right, so now, let's, now that we have got that authored, see, this is starting to feel more effective to me, a lot more effective. We could even punch this up. Now that we got that layer, we can, you know, double it up just by making another one. We can brighten it and make it more saturated. Crank the saturation up. Make it fun. Uh, we can adjust this highlight by putting levels on it. You know, have more or have less. Let's just make less. So this just punches a little bit more. Make it a screen layer. It's a trick I learned from L, making colors into a screen kind of ramps up the energy of a color. This is starting to get kind of exciting. I think the blue, you know, this whole, now this, this whole layer group, we can make this a layer style too. So multiply, it's all dark. You can go lighten it, only lighten stuff up. And now this is also working on the drawing itself too. So you can see like the lines are changing colors. So like this line is getting purple and gold and stuff like that, which is all kind of nice. That's exciting. Looks like a spaceman when it's white. So back to the over overlay again. I like the overlay a lot. I like overlay a lot. bringing back in our gradients, bringing back in our base color. You got something that's getting pretty compelling, All right? Bring in our background, not too bad, not too shabby. Let's dial stuff, so go back to the flat blue gray. Highlights, colors, light and shadow. Play around with that. Look at different layers. Look at different strengths. It's feeling kind of good. It's kind of neat, man. Kind of neat. Do I got my red fill? Put the red fill back in there. It makes it vibrate. It's pretty fun. 
So what else do we want to do quickly to wrap this up? I want to put some skin tone in, at least in his face. Joe says, uh, heading out. Good luck with the rest of this. Thanks, Joe. Thanks for saying hi. Appreciate you. Oh, Joe said you literally just said you were going to skin a cat a million ways. Sorry about that. Sorry about uh, threatening to skin your kitties. I don't mean to do that. Caffeine provided by Taco Bell. Got some Pepsi Coke, something like that. After my coffee from Sobbles. Sobbles Bakery, shout out to my local market. All right, color stuff. What else do I want to do? I want to just put a little red uh, around the face area. It's just so it's not yellow. This is a new layer. I'm going to paint this traditionally. Uh, this should actually be under the drawing. Yeah. So let's go in here. It's good to make sound effects while you draw. Getting a lot of glow effects from the uh, light and shadow layer there. So I might mask that area out around the face just so I'm not getting like over controlled stuff going on. Maybe blue eyes. Blue eyes and brown eyebrows. Or redder around the eye. Something like that. Something like that. You can do wild stuff too. Like maybe, maybe just overlay isn't what I want. Maybe I want it to be a little multiply. So I like what this is doing. And then a little bit of overlay on top of that. So that's kind of cool. That's kind of cool. It's feeling meaty. It's getting nice and heavy. Yeah. It's feeling feeling deep. So I haven't even gotten into specific colors for kit. Right? Uh, so let's get into that. Maybe this... We've just been doing tonal colorization. What if we did like his kit tuned up to certain colors? So let's call a new layer. We'll call it kit colors. And this guy's, maybe he's tactical. So we'll go with like a range of green, even though Navy SEALs would get pretty upset at the idea of uh, one of their divers wearing range of green. And uh, let's start with his uh, wetsuit. Maybe it'll be this greenish color. Anything maybe soft could be this green, and anything firm could be like a brown maybe. See, so I'm just painting one color here, but it's underneath that overlay layer and multiply. So I'm still getting all that excitement of the of the highlights and shadows in their colors down over this kit. Right? It is the power of layer styles. You know? I'm seeing that the red isn't respecting the same rules, so I might come back in and on the red uh, adjust that layer style. So red fill, let's make it some kind of overlay as well. Maybe lighten. 
Screen? Color dodge? What do we like? Screen's good. Screen at maybe 70%. Looks good. Painted outside the lines there. Let's erase that. All right. So we got a little bit of green. I kind of want some red details again. I'm just like craving red for this character. Maybe I'm thinking about 2001 A Space Odyssey. So let's paint his helmet red. Let's see what that feels like. This is getting exciting. You know, <laughs> it's pretty funny with the red. Uh, maybe he's got some red gloves too. That might be cool. When working underwater, you want to see your hands. Let me see your hands. Red control surfaces, maybe. Some red buttons and switches. It's pretty sweet. I kind of like that green for uh, this uh, delivery vehicle, too. So maybe I'll grab that green back. I've got to turn everything off. Pick that green. Painting outside the lines. Let's select our uh, uh, filled area. And we can quickly color in. See, so look at the range we're getting out of the screen now because we have all these light and shadow layers with colors built in. Isn't that interesting? Isn't that interesting? So, just something, something to play around with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's probably a little too dark on the bottom here, but we're starting to experiment. We're having a good time. Instead of black, let's go like with a dark purple, dark gray purple for maybe some of the rubber ceiling area. Creating a lot of contrast around the face, because that's where our eyes want to be anyway. Our eyes want to be looking at that face. This guy's pretty much wearing a gasket around his face for this deep sea suit. Thingy. Uh, I don't know what to color those um, little bits yet. Maybe like a yellow. For the camera section, and maybe like a blue teal something for the GPS puck radar thing. Oh yeah, we got to paint the rest of the kit. Uh, let's go with some kind of dark metallic.
me hide the uh, selection set too, just so it's not so annoying. Let's get the blade to be a lighter color. You know, something like this. A little lost and found in there. Maybe a little too dark. But we're just playing here. We're just having a good time. And then maybe some kind of tan brown for the pouches and stuff. Pouches and blades. Maybe a red for this little bit of a scarf that's over here. Morale patch. I don't know what this is. Maybe a part of forearm, wrist guard thing. Body armor. Plate rack. Battle belt. Holster. Mag pouches. Magazines. Knee pads, boots, booties. You know, something like that. It's looking pretty wild, man. It's pretty looking pretty wild. Put some greens back in. So it's a mess, but it's our mess. This has been a quick guide to how Tom thinks about coloring. So I hope this was fun. I hope this was interesting. We can adjust all these different layers now. Not all the way, always the way I work. But I thought it would be interesting to share a bit of this method with you all. Cool. Lots of layers, lots of stuff going on. Go nuts, have fun, make drawings that are exciting and meaningful to you, and hopefully somebody else will agree. Take care. Have a great weekend. I hope you all have a excellent weekend and stay warm. L says, yeah, colors. <laughs> hope you enjoyed this, L. Have a great, have a great one. Bye-bye.